this place. And let this be your earnest prayer. Say, God, teach me your will. Teach, teach me, your, me will. your will. Teach me your will so that I may please you. For you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. Teach me your will.
intercessor, the counselor, the strength, the strengthener, the standby, the Holy Spirit. Everybody say the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and to act on my behalf, will teach you all things. Amen. 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 Teach you all things, and he will help you remember everything that I have told you. Amen. We're reading John chapter 14, verse 26. It says here, but the helper, which is the Holy Spirit, raise your hand if you know the Holy Spirit to be a comforter. Raise your hand if you know the Holy Spirit to be your advocate. Amen. Raise your hand if you know the Holy Spirit to be your intercessor. Raise your hand if you know the Holy Spirit to be a counselor, the one that gives you strength, the one that is your standby. Amen. Let but the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Jesus talk. To represent Jesus, to act on Jesus' behalf, he will teach us all things. The Holy Spirit was sent to us to teach us the will of the Father for yeah. our lives. Yeah. And as God teaches us his will, we will begin to know his will. The more we learn from our Heavenly Father, the more we learn from the Holy Spirit, we will know the will of the Father. Amen? Amen. And not only will we know it, but we will Amen. You've got some praise if you're glad that everything that the Holy Spirit teaches you, you will not forget. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, man. It says here, He will help you remember everything that I have told you. Everything that the Word of God has illuminated unto you. You have the Holy Spirit to keep you in the know so that you won't forget. Your flesh may want you to forget. Your flesh may cause you to stray away for a little bit. But you can never stray too far away because the word is hidden in your heart. Glory. Amen. Because of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Everybody say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Raise your hand if you want to know his will. I want to know his will. Yes. Then raise your hand if you want to be taught. Amen. 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 That's it. As the Holy Spirit teaches us. Amen. Amen. That's why I got the hugest smile on my face. As the Holy Spirit teaches us, he, we will know his will and we will be equipped his will. Oh, Everybody right. say equipped. Equipped. Loud and proud. Equipped. equipped. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 13 verses 20 through 21. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 20 through 21. Amen. So we know that the Holy Spirit was sent to teach us. Amen. Because we need to be taught the will of the Lord. Am I right? Isn't that what David cried out? Teach me your, my, your will, O God, so that I may be pleasing unto you. Am I right about that, y'all? Amen. Say so, amen. This is what Hebrews 13, <laughs> verse 20 through 21 declares. This is really going to blow your mind. Are y'all ready? Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It says here, now may the God of peace, I want you to under, underline that, God of peace. Now may the God of peace, I'm going to reference that later on. Now may the God of peace, the source of serenity and spiritual well-being, who brought you from the dead, uh, brought, brought up from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood that sealed and ratified the eternal covenant, verse 21, equip you with every good thing to carry out his will and strengthen you, making you complete and perfect as you ought to be, accomplishing in us which has been pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. And everybody say, equip. equip. So the Holy Spirit has been sent to teach us the will of the Father for our lives. And guess what? The, the peace of God, which passes all Standing will equip us to carry out his will. I'm so thankful for that. On how the Holy Spirit will equip us. Not only will he equip us to carry out the will, but he'll strengthen us to carry through his will. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Give God some praise if you're thankful for how the Holy Spirit quicken, uh, equips you and strengthens you. Amen. In order to know the will of God, we must be taught the will of God for our lives. While we're being taught the will of God for our lives, we are being equipped to fulfill his will. We can only know and be equipped. 
with through his word. Everybody say through his word. Through his word. I want you to point to your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you reading the word? Neighbor, are you reading the word? Are you, are, you, uh, are, are you paying attention to the word? Are you, are you, are you basking in the word? Amen. Are you spending time in the word? The only way we can know the will of the Father is through the word of God. Amen. Amen. Raise your hand if you are a lover of the word. Raise your hand if you love the truth. Amen. How many of y'all know that the truth will set us what? Free. How many of y'all know when we operate in the will of God, we're operating in freedom. Amen. Because we're on that path. Amen. The path that God has set us on. Amen. No matter what we go through, we're always going to keep through because that's the path that God brought us, put us on. Amen. So when we're on the path that God gives us, it's always a sense of freedom. Everybody say freedom. Freedom. Everybody say peace. Peace. Raise your hand if you want more freedom and more peace. Amen. Amen. Then tell your neighbor you better stay in the will of God. Better stay in the will of God. Amen. Amen. Say it with some conviction. You better stay in the will of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. How many of you want to be in the will of God? Amen. We talk about knowing the will of God, but how many of y'all want to be in the will Amen. of God? Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, I want to be in this will. I want to be in his Amen. will. Amen. I want to tell you other than I want to be a part of his will. I want to be a part of his will. That's it. I want to be a, I want to be in his will. I want to be a part of his will. I want to be engrafted in his will. In his will. I want to be the, 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 the intricate part of the equation of his will for my life. I want to be all up in there. Right? Amen. So that it can be carried through. Amen. Amen. This is what the Holy Spirit told me. When you abide in Jesus Christ, you are in his will and you will bear fruit. Mm. Raise your hand if you want to bear fruit. Amen. Raise your hand if you want to have evidence that the will of God is in the operation in your life. Amen. 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 We got to have evidence. Everybody say evidence. evidence. When people on the outside look at our lives, they're like, you know what? I don't know what's going on, but uh, there's, shit, there's some about Vincent. There's some about Courtney. There's some about Daddy Hayes. There's some about I don't know what's going on, but it seems like there's a glow on their life. It right. seems like they're blessed and highly favored. You know, there's somebody of, 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 a, of a powerful origin is orchestrating their life. I see them smiling even though they're going through this. I see them lifting up their hands and praising God even though they're going through that. Why? Because they are abiding in God. Praise Him. Amen. 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 Y'all need some proof? Turn with me to John chapter 15. This is what it means to abide in God. Amen. Hallelujah. John 15, and we're going to read verses 1 through 11. This is a very familiar scripture, but the Holy Spirit led me to this scripture because it talks about how we are to be in Christ. Amen. Amen. So that we may know the will of the Father. And when we know or when we're in the will of the Father, uh, uh, we will bear fruit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what it says here. I am the true vine. This is Jesus talking. And my Father is the vine dresser. Amen? Amen? Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. Raise your hand if you want to be that branch that bears fruit. Amen. Raise your hand if you want to be that son and that daughter that God continually works on and prunes and perfects. Amen. We don't want to just bear fruit. We want to bear richer and finer fruit. Amen. Everybody say evidence. Evidence. Amen. And this is your verse 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have given you, the teachings which I have discussed with you. Amen? That's the, the, he says you are already clean. Everybody say that to me. That's me. Verse 4 says, remain in me, and I will remain in you. Isn't that powerful? Woo. When we're connected to God, he will stay connected to us just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without Neither can you bear fruit, producing evidence of your faith, unless you remain in me. Amen. I am the vine. Verse 5. 
you are the branches. One who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. Everybody say much fruit. Much Raise fruit. your hand if you want to bear much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. Raise your hand if you know that you can't do nothing without our Savior. We live in a world today that tells us you can stand on your own two feet and that's a lie from the pit of hell. We can't do nothing without Six, if anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch and withers and dies. And they gather such branches and throw them into the fire and they are burned. But verse 7 and 8 is really going to blow your mind. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, what does he mean by that? The word of God. Everybody say the word of God. Word of God. That God. is, if you are vitally united. In, uh, and my message lives in your heart. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done yes. for you. Amen. My Father is glorified and honored by this. When you bear much fruit and prove yourself to be my true disciples, Amen. that is the will of the Lord Amen. that we remain in Him, so that He can remain in us, so that we can bear fruit that brings glory to His name. Amen. Everybody say, be in the wheel. Be, be in the wheel. wheel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I, verse 9 says this, I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love and do not doubt my love for you. Verse 10, if you keep my commandments and obey my teaching, you will remain in my love. Meaning if you keep my word hidden inside your heart, my love will continue to cover you. That is the will of God. Mm -hmm. Wow. When we keep his word hidden in our hearts, his love continues to cover. That is the will of the Lord. I have told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you. You know, when I read that word and y'all were like, say amen and glory to God. What, what, what was that? When I told you these things, my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy may, may be made full and complete and overflowing. Amen? Amen. Isn't that powerful? When we know that God loves oh, us, when we stay in the will of God, when we're in the will of God, His love continues to comfort us and so much joy is overwhelming on the side of us because we know we're coming. Everybody say, be in the wheel. Be in the wheel. We must be in the wheel. Amen. Amen. I want you to tell your sisters, your flesh, say, flesh, flesh. you will not hinder me, will not from, hinder me. Remaining from remaining in the will of God. In the will of God. Amen. 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 It says, abide in me and I'll abide in you. This is what Jesus said. And you will bear much fruit. Mm -hmm. That fruit's going to bring glory to oh. my name. Amen. Amen. That's the will of the Father. The will of the Father is that we walk out the word. Amen. I'm going to get to my title. It's time to walk. Everybody say it's time to walk. It's time, it's time, to, time walk. to walk out the will that God has for us. Amen. Amen. It's time to walk it out. Everybody say walk it out. Walk it out. Amen. How many of you want to see the will of God in your life? Amen. Amen. We, we talk about knowing the will of God. We talk about being in the will of God. And the Holy Spirit taught us how to see the will of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Turn with me to Ezekiel 12 and 25. Ezekiel 12 and 25. Amen? This, this is going to bless you. Hallelujah. Are y'all being blessed today? Amen. 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 Ezekiel 12, verse 25. Ezekiel 12, verse 25 declares this. Are y'all there? Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 25 says it. <clears throat> For I, the Lord, will speak. And whatever word I speak will be accomplished. Amen. It will no longer be delayed. And for in your days, O rebellious house, I will speak the word and I will fulfill it, says the Lord. 
Now this was the prophet Ezekiel talking to the house of Israel that was in a rebellious state. But I'm not talking about you, the people that are in a rebellious state. If you know, if, if you're in right standing for with God, how much more will God speak on your behalf? And whatever He speaks will be accomplished on your behalf. Whatever He speaks will be revealed unto you. So when He speaks the word that's on inside of you, that means He's speaking His will that He has for you, and that will will be revealed to you, and you can see what He has for your life. Wow. Amen. Speak. Everybody say, everybody say, speak. speak. It says, for the Lord will speak. Word I speak will be accomplished. Wow. Amen. The only way that God, the only thing that responds, that God responds to is his word. Raise your hand if you want more of his word hidden on the inside of you. When he sees more of his word living on the inside of us, he speaks to that word that's hidden into our hearts. That word becomes life, and that that, that word is revealed to us. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Manifest, Lord. Manifest, Lord. Reveal, Lord. He Reveal, wants us Lord. To speak. We want God to speak. Amen. It says here, when, for I, the Lord, will speak, and whatever word I speak will be accomplished. It will not be delayed. I was reading Ezekiel, Ezekiel 12 and 25. Amen. Hallelujah. Raise your hand if you want God to speak and it not be delayed. Amen. When he when he speaks, or when he speaks to the word that's on inside of you, that word becomes life, and that word is being revealed to you. And through his word, his will for your life will be revealed to you, and you can see it. Amen. Turn with me to First Thessalonians. Excuse me, First Thessalonians two and thirteen. First Thessalonians two and thirteen. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to see the will of God being manifested. First Thessalonians 2 and 13. When you're there, say hallelujah. hallelujah. First Thessalonians 2 and 13 says this. Hallelujah. And we also thank God to continually for this. That when you receive the word of God concerning salvation, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of mere men, but as it is truly the word of God, which is effectually at work in you who believe. Raise your hand if you believe in the word that's on that side of you. Amen. Amen. So then, you know what? That word is working on the inside of you. It's working on the inside of you. It meaning it's being revealed to you so that you may know the will of the Father for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we thank him. That's why every chance we get, we got to thank God for his word. Amen? Amen. Because God is effectually working the word on the inside of us. So it may be revealed to us so that we may see the will of the Father operating in our lives. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But now it's time to walk. Everybody say it's time to walk. It's time to walk. As a matter of fact, that's the, I already, I've already started preaching the message. But the last final thing that God wanted me to talk about was walking in the will of the Father. Amen. Raise your hand if you want to walk in the will of the Father. Amen. Amen. We, 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 raise your hand if you want to stay in position so that you can continually walk. In the will of the Father. I want you to say with some tenacity and some conviction, it's time to walk. It's time to walk. Tell your neighbor, it's time to walk. Raise your hand if you want to walk in the will of your heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. When I looked up, you know, and here's the thing, walk is such a very common word. But then when I was looking up the de definition of walk, walk, it has a very powerful meaning. And I was looking at what the what walk meant. I'm like, wow, I didn't even know this word could mean this. Amen? So when I looked at the word walk, it says to make headway. Everybody say headway. headway. Meaning that you got to be moving. Everybody say uh, moving. moving. Don't we serve a God that makes moves? Do we serve a God that is stagnant? Last time I checked, we do not serve a God, serve a God that is stagnant. 
Amen. Amen. Stagnation brings filth and germs and diseases and all these other things. Have you ever seen a puddle of water that has no flow to it? It gets gray, it gets dingy, it gets milky, it, gets, it starts to stink and you have flies everywhere. But we don't serve a God of stagnation. We serve a God that is forever moving. Everything he speaks, life happens. Movement happens. Amen. Amen. So everybody say movement. movement. So when you're walking, you're making headway. When you're walking, you're pursuing a course of action or a way of life or how you should conduct yourself. Are y'all hearing what this definition is saying? When you're walking, you're pursuing a course of action. Everybody say action. 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 Everybody say movement. movement. Yeah, and it's a way of life. Everybody say way of life. Way of life. It's, it's how you are going to conduct yourself. Everybody say conduct myself. Conduct when myself. you're walking, uh, 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 you're acting in association or continuing in union. Are y'all hearing me? Raise your hand if you if God, if you believe that, that God walks with you and you walk with him. Okay. Amen. So when we're walking with God and God is walking with us, guess what? We are accomplishing something. We are performing something. We are in continual union with each other. We are in association when we walk with God. It's a way of life when we walk with God. It's a course of action. It's how we conduct ourselves. There's a special way we conduct ourselves when we walk with our Heavenly Father. When we walk with our Heavenly Father, we walk with purpose, amen? And God is measuring. He's serving. He's inspecting our lives, amen? When we give God full, total control, when we walk with Him, He's allowing us to measure up everything that is in our lives. We're allowing Him to tell us what is wrong so we can stay in right standing. That's what it means to walk with God. Amen, amen. Wow. Isn't that powerful? Reach in if you want to walk with God again. Walk with God is walking in his wheel. Glory. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So in order to walk in the will of God, we must keep his word in our hearts. Fulfill God's will through his word. Mm -hmm. Wow. If we want to walk with God, with all you note takers out there, in order to walk in the will of God, we must keep his word in our hearts. Fulfilling God's will can only be done through his word. Are y'all hearing me today? Amen. Fulfilling God's will can only be done through his word. I'll give you some proof. Turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. 1 Kings chapter 2. I hope you're being blessed today. I'm almost done. Amen. Amen. First Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Amen. Let me turn it here. First Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Now let me just give you a paint a little picture. David was about to die. And he was given he was giving his son Solomon a commission. Amen. 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 And, 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 and point number one that the Holy Spirit wants to tell us: in order to walk in the will of God, we must keep His Word in our hearts. Fulfilling God's will can only happen through fulfilling His Word. Wow. Amen. Amen. So this is what First Kings chapter two, verses one through four declares. It says here, verse 1, when David's time to die approached, he gave instructions to Solomon, his son, saying, I am going the way of all the earth as dust to dust. Be strong and prove yourself a man. Verse 3, keep the charge of the Lord your God. That is, fulfill your obligation to walk in his ways. Are y'all seeing that? Mm. Keep his commandments, his, uh, his statutes, his precepts, and his testimonies as is written in the law of Moses so that you may succeed in everything that you do and wherever you turn so that the Lord may fulfill his promise concerning me saying, if your sons are careful regarding their way of life to walk before me in truth with all their heart and mind and with all their soul, you shall not fail to have a man or descendant on the throne of Israel. 
So here's the thing. I mean, I'll, y'all are catching it. David was given a promise to God. If you continue to walk in my will, if you continue to walk, walk in my way, that long after you die, if your sons continue, they will always be a descendant and or an inheritance to the throne of Israel. So David was about to die, and he told his son, look here, son, please fulfill your obligation to walk in the way of the Lord. Keep his statutes, keep his commandments, keep his precepts, keep his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, so that you will succeed in everything. Wherever you turn, you will be successful. Everybody say everything. Everything. Everybody say everything. Everything. So that the Lord may fulfill his promise concerning me. So I'm here to tell you, don't raise your hand if you know that Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law. So we have Jesus who fulfilled the law for us. We have Jesus that's living on the inside of us. So if we keep his commandments, if we keep his precepts, if we keep his word, if we walk in his will, everything we do, we will succeed. Wherever we turn, we will end up being successful. Why? Because it's the promise that's being fulfilled when Jesus carried it on that sacrifice. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Glory so to God. Awesome. Everybody say it's time to walk. It's time, time to walk. walk. Say it with some conviction. It's time to walk. It's time, time to walk. walk. If we keep his precepts, mm-hmm. walk in his oh. ways. Wow. Oh. Amen. Jesus already fulfilled the law when he died on the cross. You have the Holy Spirit. Who's your comforter? Who's your guide? Who's your Who's your helpmate? Who's your friend? Who's your strengthener? So if we stay in the will of God, mm-hmm. glory to God, we are successful. Amen. Amen. And David and Solomon didn't even have the Holy Spirit. My, my, All they my, had my. was the law of Moses. Mm-hmm. Uh, the law of Moses wasn't even fulfilled yet. But back in present time, didn't Jesus fulfill the law? Amen. Isn't there a greater power living on the inside yes, of us? Man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, did they have the Holy Spirit by then? But according to the Word of God, the Holy Spirit didn't even come yet. So just think all oh, uh, this that was promised to David and his sons. My, my, what more will God do for us Lord. with the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us? Amen, as amen. long as we walk in the will mm-hmm. of our Father. In that powerful? It says you you will be successful in everything that you do. Mm-hmm. And wherever you turn, I'm here to tell you, you know, I must have been walking with God at least for a little bit. God, I have been blessed. And I'm not saying that I got money in the bank and I'm rich and that I'm saying, yeah, I am blessed and highly favored. God has ordered my steps every single way according to the laws of man I should be fired somewhere or not have a job but God has ordered my step because there's power in keeping his commandments keeping his precepts keeping his word living on the inside of me amen amen glory that blew my mind y'all something to blow you back oh man that blew my mind this was David this was David he says, yo, you do this, God will fulfill the promise that he gave me long before you even came. But wait a minute, what did Jesus do when he came on the cross? Jesus died on the cross long before we came to fulfill the law. My now we keep it hidden in our hearts. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. You thought that blew your mind. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23. Hallelujah. Is it, it's time to walk. Amen. Amen. It's time to walk. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23. If you're there, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It says here, 
So if you thought 1 Kings blew your mind, let's read Jeremiah 7 and see what verse 23 declares. But this thing I command, I did command them. Listen to and obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and you will walk in all the way which I have commanded you, so that it may be well with you. Raise your hand if you want it to be well with you. So if we listen and obey the voice of the Holy Spirit, and we guess what? It's God says, I will be your God, and you will be my son, you will be my daughter, and I will, and you will walk in all the way which I have commanded you, and it will be well with you. Mm -hmm. Glory. Tell your neighbor, walk in the will of the Lord. Walk, walk in, in the, the will of the Lord. Tell your other one, I want you to scream in their face. It's time to walk. It's time, time to walk. Through his word. Through his word. Say it again. It's time to walk. Time to walk through his word, through his word. to fulfill his word. To fulfill his, his word. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Point number two. In order to walk in the will of God, make sure you're on the right path. Amen. Ask your neighbor which path do you want? Which path are you on? Ask your other neighbor which path do you want? Which path you, you can go ahead and answer them if you want. I'm on the path of the Lord. Amen. 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 Which path do you want? The Holy Spirit wanted me to uh, want, uh, ask me, Vince, what path do you want? You know, if, if you're walking, you're walking somewhere. Amen. You, you know, you're, you're, you're not just walking on in some aimless void of space. Then you, there's got to be a path. Amen. 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 But make sure you're on the right path. Amen. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 9. The Holy Spirit wants to remind us about the path that we're on. Amen. Are y'all being blessed today? Amen. I'm Praise done. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to get ready for our illustration. Amen. And it's going to really be powerful. Romans chapter 8, 5 through 9. What path are you on? What path are you on? Are you on? Meaning, uh, I'm suggesting you can either walk in the will of the Father or not walk in the will of the Father. And tell your neighbor it's a thin line. It's a thin line. It's a thin line. line. Amen. It is such a thin line from walking in his will and not walking in his will. Amen. It's a thin line. Amen. And if you're not careful, you can get out of the will of God. Amen. Amen. So what path are you on? Amen. Amen. And I've read this speech before, but God gave me more insight. For those of you. For those who are living, I'm reading Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 9. Verse 5, here we go. It declares, for those who are living according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, which gratify the body. But those who are living according to the spirit, set their minds on the things of the spirit, his will and purpose. Write that down. When you walk in the will of God, when you walk in the Spirit, you're walking in His will and His purpose for your life. That's why the Holy Spirit wanted me to ask each and every one of us, including myself, what path are you on? Amen. Are you walking on the path of flesh or are you walking on the path of the Spirit? Amen. Raise your hand if you want to walk in the Spirit. Raise your hand if you want to walk in His will. Raise your hand if you want to walk in his purpose. Verse 6 says this. Now the mind of the flesh is dead, both now and forever, because it pursues sin. But the mind of the spirit is life. So there are two paths there. You can go on the path leading to death, or you can go on the path leading to what? Life. And it says here, not just life, but it says, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. There goes that peace again. Everybody circle that word peace. Everybody say everybody say peace. Peace. Meaning spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God. Both now and forever. Are y'all hearing what the word of the Lord is saying? But the mind of the flesh with its sinful pursuits is actively hostile to 
God. It does not submit itself to God's law since it cannot. And those who are in the flesh living a life as casters to sin, sinful appetites and impulses cannot please God. However, you are not living in the flesh. Raise your hand if that's you. Verse 9 makes a declaration for a remnant of people. However, you are not living in the flesh, meaning you are not controlled by the sinful nature, but in the spirit. In fact, the spirit of God lives in you. He is directing you, hallelujah. He is guiding you, glory to God. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him and he is not a child of God. But let me just take an inventory real quick. Raise your hand if you know that you are a child of God. You are a child of the Most High King. That means, verse 9 declared, however, you are not living in the flesh, meaning you are not controlled. Raise your hand if you're not controlled by your sinful desires. Raise your hand if you're not controlled by your flesh. Because raise your hand if you strive each and every day to walk in the Spirit. I want you to tell your neighbor, you are walking in the spirit because when you walk in the spirit you're walking in his will you're walking in his purpose you're fulfilling his will you're fulfilling his purpose and guess what not only will you be given life but you'll be given peace everybody say peace peace, peace. glory hallelujah yes lord it is when you yeah. walk in the will of god not only are you given life so true now notice I said the word peace twice. Amen. I, I gave you a, a passage of scripture where it talks about the peace of God. May the peace of God be with you. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. That's what this is all understanding. And it says right here in Romans chapter uh, uh, chapter 8 verse, uh, where is it at Holy Spirit? Uh, where is it at Holy Spirit? Where is it at? Oh yeah. Verse 6 it says, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. Meaning the spiritual well-being that comes with walking with God. Everybody say walking with God. Walking with Amen. God. The mind of the spirit is life and peace. Raise your hand if you want to have a peace of mind. Raise your hand if you want a mindful of life. Raise your hand if you want to walk in life. Tell your neighbor, stay in his will. Stay in his will. Tell your neighbor, walk in the spirit. Which path are you on? Raise your hand if you're striving each and every day to walk the path of the Spirit. Yes, sir. It says right here. For those of you who are in the Spirit, amen, when you're in the Spirit, amen, that means that it's spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God both now and forever. Raise your hand if you want to walk with God both now and forever. Raise your hand if you want to be in a path that leads to life and not death. Amen. That's why the Holy Spirit wanted to remind us which path are you on. But I agree and declare that there's a remnant of people coming up in the Nashville area. They are more conscious and more aware of what spiritual path they're on. There's a remnant of people in Nashville that are walking after the Spirit and not after the flesh. We are a remnant here in Nashville who's more conscious of where we are the spirit, we will walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 through 17. Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 through 17. Tell your neighbor it's time to walk. Time to walk. Let's say it again. It's time to walk. Time to walk. There it is. It's time to walk. Hallelujah. It's time to walk. This is what Galatians 5, 16 through 17 says. And this is going to blow your mind, Dad. This blew my mind. Amen. He had me return to the scripture. And this is what he says. But I say, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek him and be responsive to his guidance. And then you will certainly not carry out the desire of the sinful nature, which 
which responds impulsively without regard for God and his precepts. Verse 17, for the sinful nature ha has its desire which is opposed to the spirit, and the desire of the spirit opposed the sinful nature. For these two, the sinful nature and the spirit, are in direct opposition with each other, continually in conflict, so that you, as believers, do not always do whatever good things you want to do. There's a battle of wills. So if you don't want to satisfy your flesh, you got to do what? Walk in the spirit. It says walk habitually with the Holy Spirit. Meaning it may, it must be a habit that you seek the Holy Spirit. It must be a habit that you are responsive to his guidance so that you won't step in, across that thin line of walking out of the will of God. Isn't that powerful? It's very powerful. But it gave you a remedy. Walk in the Spirit, brother. Amen. There's a remedy. Because <clears throat> we, in and of ourselves, this is what I talked about when it came to misplaced willpower. Amen. When we put our will in someone who does not have power, we will always fall short. And we will always stumble and fall. Amen. That's why it must be a continual habit. Raise your hand if you want to be part of a remnant that habitually seeks the Holy Spirit, seeks after him who's responsive to the Holy Spirit. It's a vital necessity. I got this. Amen. So that we can stay in the will of God. Amen. God, I want to stay your will. Yes, sir. Thank God, you. I don't want to stay in your way. Yes, Lord. Give me the tools that I need to Thanks. stay in the Spirit. Yes, sir. Oh, you did. You told me to habitually seek the Holy Spirit. You told me to habitually walk in the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Seek the Holy Spirit and be responsive to His guidance. God, I will forever be responsive to His way of escape. So that, when I, so that I don't fall into the other side of walking in the flesh. Because if I'm walking in the flesh, I'm not walking in the will of God. Amen. It is impossible to walk in the will of God if we're operating in our flesh. We must stay in the spirit. Yes, sir. Raise your hand if you want to make make it a, 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 a make it a, a point to walk in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Come on, say God, I want to walk. God, I want to fulfill your will. And I'm ready to walk. Come on, say, God, I'm ready to walk. I'm ready to walk. Amen. Hallelujah. My last point. When you walk in the will of God, you will not fear and your feet will be secure. Amen. When you walk in the will of God, you will not fear and your feet will be secure. Turn with me to a very familiar passage, Psalms 23, verses 1 through 4. You already know. Turn with me to Psalms 23. When you walk in the will of God, you will not fear, and your feet will be secure. This is what it says right here. This is what David said. And this is going to blow your mind. Because I never knew that the 23rd Psalm actually talked about walking in the will of God. Until God revealed it to me. It blew my mind. This is what it says right here. The Lord is my shepherd. To feed, to guide, to shield me. I shall not want. He lets me lie down at green. Besides still in quiet waters. I want you to underline and highlight verse 3 and 4. He refreshes and restores my soul, my life. He leads me on the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no for you are with me, your rod to protect, your staff to guide, they comfort me. Wow, what a God we serve. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
When you walk in the will of God, you become refreshed and he restores your soul to life. When, they, when, he, when you walk in the will of God, he leads you on a path of righteousness so that you won't slip over to the thin line of walking in your flesh. That's the path I'm talking about. You're not just walking aimlessly in some void of space. You're walking on one, two paths. Either a path of, uh, to life or a path to death. Raise your hand if you want to walk on a path leading to life. A, a path that the Holy Spirit leads you on. When you're on that path of righteousness, you will fear no evil. Because you know that God is with you. His rod, his shield is protecting you. There goes that alignment again. Praise God. Raise your hand if you want to be in alignment. Stay in alignment. Your staff guides you. They comfort me. Meaning not only does the Holy Spirit protect you, but also the Holy Spirit comforts you. Wow. They comfort me. There goes that peace again. I'm talking about peace one more time. That's a third time. Peace. Everybody say peace. Are y'all hearing me? So you mean to tell me when we fulfill the word of God for our lives, we're knowing the will of God. We're seeing the will of God because it's being revealed to us. We walk in the will of God, and guess what? We have nothing to fear, and we have peace. Glory to God. The peace that surpasses all understanding. When somebody's not in the spirit, they don't understand the type of peace that we have. You got to get in the spirit to get this revelation on the peace that, that just takes you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is there. That's the peace. That's the peace that, 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 that that's the type of peace that you're like, what? Was I in a storm? And the Holy Spirit like, yeah, you were in it. But I thought the storm stopped. The Holy Spirit's like, no, you just got through it. Wow, that was peaceful. Woo! The eye of the storm. Isn't the eye of a hurricane oh, peaceful? Yeah. In the eye of the hurricane peaceful? I'll never forget. I used to live in Florida. We would have hurricanes. I've been through some of the worst hurricanes in Florida. When my area would reach the eye of the hurricane, it looked just like this. Sunny, steel, blue sky. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? When you go through a storm, when God is leading you, when God is guiding you, when you're with God, your surroundings look like what's outside. You mean to tell me when you're in the middle of a storm you have nothing to fear? 
here? Yes. If that wasn't true, Jesus wouldn't have slept like a baby calling the hogs in the middle of the storm on the boat. He was mad with his disciples when his disciples woke him up. He's like, what? I'm asleep. Do what I taught you. Just right there in the middle of a storm, waves crashing. Jesus is rattling the windows. Why? Because he was peace. Peace. And he's calling us to walk in that peace. When we walk in his will, we walk in that peace. What God, what a mighty God we serve. When we walk in his will, we have access to his presence. Wow. But wait a minute, where's your shoes at? Grab your shoes. When, when you know what, grab your shoes. I want you to put them on. Change your shoes out. I want you to put them on. Hallelujah. You can keep it going. Put them on. Wait a minute. What are we putting on? We're putting on shoes, right? You equate that to the armor. Our feet shod with the preparation of peace. Y'all know the armor of God, right? Put on the whole armor of God that we, we may withstand for a while after that. Put on the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, feet shod with the preparation of peace. Come on. It's time to walk. Put your walking shoes on. It's time to walk. Meaning, when you put on your shoes, when your feet are shod, Meaning protected with the preparation of peace. Meaning you're equipped to walk through anything. Mm -hmm. You're equipped to walk through the trials of life. You're equipped to walk through. What does shy mean protected? Feet shy with the preparation of peace. Meaning we can freely walk into the presence of God. We can freely walk through any storm. Are y'all hearing me? We can freely walk through any situation. We can freely walk. Why? Because we're in the will of God. Amen. Stand up and I just want you to walk around. You're freely walking. You're freely walking. Amen. Amen. We're freely walking. We're protected by the peace of God. We're protected by the will of God. Doesn't the word say that when we're walking in his will, he's broadening our path and he's securing our feet. Didn't we just talk about the God of peace? Isn't one of the parts of the armor feet shot with the preparation of peace? So you mean to tell me when we walk in the will of God, we're operating in the peace of God. And we freely walk because we freely have access to the presence of God because we're walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. What a God. It's time to walk. Glory, glory. It's time to walk. Thank you, sir. As we close right now, God is saying it's time to walk. It's time to walk to your next level, next place in God. It's time to walk in your next place of destiny. It's time to walk in your next place of healing. It's, it's time to walk to your next place of love. Whatever God has you going through, whatever next place God has for you, it is the will of God for you to walk and have free access to the next place in Him so that He can get the glory. Glory to God. Amen. He can get Give God some praise and give Him rest. God, I Thank did you. Thank you, Father God. We're going to walk in your will. I've done as you asked with this series. I didn't know it was going to turn into a series, but that's what God did. I hope y'all been blessed today. Amen. I hope you guys been blessed for the past five weeks. Amen. 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 God, I will walk in your way. Yes. I will walk in your will. I will walk in your precepts. I will walk in your love. I love you, God. Tell them how much.
much alone. Oh, thank you, Lord. Is there anybody who would like to get saved? There's anybody on Facebook that would like to get saved. If you want to walk in the will of God, now is the time. If, if, if you were, if you uh, saw this message and this message really uh, uh, pushed you to your next place, you're like, well, Vince, how do I walk with God? First, you've got to have God, Jesus, living on the inside of your heart. And if you're watching, watching this broadcast right now, God is giving you another opportunity, or this Facebook post, God is giving you another opportunity to walk with him. If you're listening today, and if you want to walk with Jesus Christ, if you want to have Jesus Christ living on the inside of you, repeat after me, say, Father God, I am a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I believe that your son Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe that on the third day he rose again and he is now seated on the right hand of God the Father. Thank you God. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. My personal Lord and Savior. I make you Lord over my life. I make you Lord over my circumstance. I make you Lord over my situation. I make you Lord over my body. I know now that through you, I will be perfected. Thank you, God, for putting me on the right path of being in your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout hallelujah. Yes. I believe and decree and declare that somebody got saved. Father God, I just to leave this place but never from your presence. Go before us. Be with us. As everybody who sows today, may it return to them 100-fold in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now that we're walking out our soul salvation. We're walking in the will of God. For those of us who are already saved and have a, have a relationship with the Lord, uh, I pray that your walk with God goes to another level so that you can get to your next place and your next destiny. So you can walk out the peace that surpasses all understanding. Because you're walking in the spirit and you're fulfilling the will of God for your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. There would be no accidents, no freak accidents in the name of Jesus. Everybody under the sound of your voice, God is protected right now. Everybody connected to us under the sound of your voice is protected right now. There will not, no destinies will be cut short in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind the canker worm right now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every seed that was planted, it's buried deep and fertile ground, and it's going to grow because we're going to water each and every day. We're going to stay living. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. amen. We love you. God bless you. Stay living.